Here we go then. The Fire TV Cube is now out. Fire TV Cube version 3. And ours has arrived. Actually, we've had four arrive. And we've got another one coming in the week. Which means, within this video, we'll be giving one of these to one of you guys. And we'll later in the video, we will tell you how to enter to win. So stay tuned for that. We're going to fully review it. We're going to get this open. Actually, I've already done it. I'm not going to make you guys feel stupid by showing you how to open a box. This is your Fire TV Cube. The new design is beautiful and we're going to delve into it in a second. So in that box we get this cube. You get your buttons on top. Beautiful, we'll talk about. You get your sockets on the back. So we will talk about this as well. HDMI pass through, which is great. Um, USB, which is great, but is USB 2. We're going to talk about that and we're going to demonstrate it working. Also, Ethernet cable. We've got an Ethernet socket on there, which is limited to 100 megabytes. We're going to talk about that as well. You get the brand new remote. Beautiful. The new remote does come with up and down channel buttons. Um, we also get a TV guide button. We've got a picture in picture button. Um, all on there. Compared to the old remote, it is a bit bigger, but does have a few new features. Also, also in here, we have a power lead. Of course we have a power lead, but it's not your standard Fire TV power lead. It's a 15 watt plug with straight in power connector to your cube. Right, before we delve into our Fire TV cube generation 3, I've got one set up. What we're going to do is ask you to hit that subscribe button. If you're a regular watcher here, do drop a like and a share. And we're going to really go and talk about it now. So, so on this Fire TV next generation, we have a few key features we're going to cover first. Firstly, it is 20% more powerful than the previous generation. So features an octa-core 2 gigahertz processor, makes it 20% more powerful than that previous gen. The supercharged processor increases app launch speeds, making the Fire TV the smoothest and best device and media experience Amazon have ever released. So this is good. Next part, this is one of the first HDMI pass-throughs. Okay, so we get a HDMI input on the device. You can plug in your Skybox. This is brilliant touch. You can plug in your Xbox. You can plug in another media player into your Xbox and you can activate it while on your cube. I'm gonna show you in two seconds. We've got Wi-Fi 6E support plus a built-in Ethernet port. Right, let's get straight on about the Ethernet port. These devices aren't built specifically to be wired in, okay? They are built to be wireless devices. Yes, you can wire it in, and yes, 100 megabyte is the maximum speed you can get through the Ethernet port. But that is plenty to stream on, okay? Many people have a lot less than that. Most people, even with more than that, don't always get that high speed because of bandwidth, everything like that. 100 is fine. But these devices are designed to be put around your house wirelessly to get a great streaming experience, okay? So let's kind of, that's why they kind of cheap out on the Ethernet port. It is there if you want to do it. And yes, you get a better um, Ethernet and connection. But Wi-Fi 6E is top notch. Wi-Fi 6 is top notch. And I have been running Fire TV and Fire streaming devices wirelessly for years, okay? Hands-free voice, cinematic experience, so you can control all your stuff with your Alexa, which is built in. Um, for your 4K Ultra HD, you can control the lot. Another key touch, super resolution upscaling provides enhanced picture quality by converting HD content into 4K content, okay? So you do not get that on previous gens, but it may come on a future update, okay? And obviously you get your endless entertainment. So enough of the stats, let's look at the normal stuff, okay? We have it here, we have your streaming device. Um, standardly, your settings, everything is pretty much the same as you would get on your normal Fire TV device. What is great is here. It has its own built-in media player. So this is awesome for playing your own media. It's nothing better than awesome. A great touch, a great piece of technology, and hella useful, I'd say. I don't even know what I said there. I ran out of words, it's so useful. We're gonna show you a media player in a minute. And HDMI is for your HDMI pass-through. So watch this. Okay, we have now switched onto my Xbox, okay? So we now 
on your Xbox. Let me just get some control there. So we're on my Xbox instead. And you can just push your home button and you're back on your fire stick. Yeah, cool. This is what I'm demonstrating with. This could be your Sky TV. This could be your PlayStation, whatever you plug in. Okay. What you can go is Alexa, change to HDMI. Okay. Okay, okay. Alexa, switch back to Fire TV. Yeah, so you could do that with whatever. And that is brilliant. What a touch that is. Next up, media. Okay, so a lot of people have complained about the USB port um, being a USB 2.0. A USB 2.0 will transfer data about 400 megabytes per second fast, okay? So what I've done, this file here is stored on a USB drive, okay, 2.0. It's not a 3.0, which, yes, of course we wanted it, but did we need it? Not really. This is a video playback of a 4K content, okay? It's only a short clip, and we can click it, and it will happily play crystal clear picture 4K from the USB, and quick. There is no lagging, there is no freeze, that is a 4K picture for you, straight off of the USB device. That's not stored on the device, that's stored on the USB device. Okay, it is more than fast enough to play your media USB 2.0. Again, we say to save cost. To save cost, they would put in a USB 2. They don't really need to put a USB 3 in it. USB 3 is very good for transferring media. So if you wanted to move something from your PC to a hard drive, USB 3 is brilliant. But to plug in an external hard drive and play some movies, some music, on your Fire TV Cube, you don't really need a USB 3. Again, these are my opinions. So, apart from that, yes, we've got the upscaling. The fluid and the speed the device is moving is very quick. If you want to win one of these, if you want to win one of these, comment down below which streaming device you are using, okay? Let us know in the comments which streaming device you are currently using and we will pick one of those comments to give back to you guys one of these, okay? So, the all new Fire TV Cube is coming in at $139.99 in the UK. So, this puts this at Amazon's most expensive product, but still about £60 cheaper than the Nvidia Shield, maybe £40 cheaper than Nvidia Shield. They have come down in price recently, um, their latest version. If I was gonna buy one, a Nvidia Shield Pro, or a Fire TV Cube, third generation, I would buy the third generation. But it is a lot of money. The difference here is Amazon's own mistake a little bit is their top end products are so good. The Fire TV Stick 4K Max is a very good device for $54.99. But if you want that hands-on experience, um, if you want that hands-free talking, if you want that video pass-through, I'd definitely recommend updating to the Fire TV Cube third generation. The built-in media player is huge, especially if you like to put your own media on a hard drive and bring it on. Of course it is, that's so easy. It's plug and play. I literally plugged in my USB drive. Here it is. That is my USB drive. I plugged that in the Fire TV Cube and that played instantly the media on the back there. That simple, really easy. You've got your 4K Max, um, all these Fire Sticks should be treated almost separately to the Fire TV Cube. Again, I think it's a little bit expensive. Um, personally, I think it may come down, but if you don't mind spending a little bit of money on your streaming device, I would take this. I said that the 4K Max would be the best streaming device of 2023, and I don't really back away from that too much because price compared to what you get is great but that is for streaming alone. If you want a little bit more than streaming, the 16 gigabyte storage of the Fire TV Cube is plenty. Now we can add a perfectly capable um, hard drive, okay? Easy plug and play hard drive. Two gigabyte of RAM is more than enough for streaming only. Yes, things like the Nvidia Shield have a bit more RAM, but that's because they are for gaming as well. RAM is used for doing multiple things at once. Okay, RAM on a device is for multiple things at once. So on your streaming device, you stream. You don't do multiple things at once. This is why two gig of RAM is plenty. Even the one gig of RAM on some of these smaller devices is plenty. Okay, two gig of RAM is plenty. Um, this new octo-core CPU 
2.2 gigahertz and the 4 times 2 gigahertz GPU 800 megahertz is powerful. As we showed earlier, this is easily shown by how quick the device is moving around and navigating. You are not going to get much freeze up on that. So all in all, for the price, it's expensive, but it's good. If you can see one on sale, definitely get one. Would you upgrade a 4K Max to one? Probably not, unless you needed to. But like most devices, you don't need to upgrade unless something's not working. My personal opinion, I'm going to set this up and I'm going to let you know in a month's time what I think of it. It's going to go in my front room as my main device. My NVIDIA Shield's gone in the drawer. If you did want to win one of these, um, comment underneath which streaming device you currently use. Okay, comment underneath which streaming device you currently use, or if you don't use one, let us know in the description, in the comments, sorry, and we will pick one lucky winner to win a 4K Fire TV Cube Generation Free. Okay, this giveaway is not affiliated with YouTube. This giveaway is not affiliated with Google, it's personally from Doc Squiffy, us, as a brand to one of you guys. So comment underneath, you don't need to be a subscriber to win, but that does help to find out if you have one when we do announce it. Also, we will get this drawn by, let's say, the 10th of November, so 12 days. Get those comments in. We've also given one away on Twitter, we've also given one away on Facebook. Go and see if you can find those giveaways as well. Um, obviously, before we leave, if you can, do remember to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you soon.